Getting the best quality image and photo can be the difference between doing photography or video as a hobby and becoming a full-blown professional. And the quality of your camera can be the difference between a good shot and a perfect shot. In this video, we break down the top five best mirrorless cameras on the market this year. So whether you're looking for a budget option or looking for the best of the best, we will definitely have an option for you. If you're interested in finding out which mirrorless camera will be best for you, stay tuned. We're gonna be looking at these cameras on the market based on your different needs and wants. Real quick for those that don't know how mirrorless cameras work, in the mirrorless camera, light passes through the lens and right onto the image sensor, which captures a preview of the image to display on the rear screen. There's more to it, but I'm sure we're not at all interested about the exact inner workings of the camera as long as it produces great footage and photos. As always, all the links to all the products mentioned in this video will be in the description down below, and we always keep it up to date with information we may not get a chance to mention in the video. We also keep links to find the best prices on each product mentioned in the description, so if you want up-to-date pricing information, be sure to check that out. For our best budget mirrorless camera and the best camera under 500, we have the Olympus OM-DE M10 II. The EM10 Mark II's design is decidedly retro. In addition to the overall body, which is available in silver, black, or all black, the EM10 Mark II has multiple dials in the top plate, reminiscent of older film cameras. The electronic viewfinder has been upgraded for the Mark I, resulting in a larger, brighter, 2.36 million pixel OLED EVF. A number of options are available, including a level gauge and an interesting new feature called SOVF, simulated optical viewfinder. With SOVF enabled, the viewfinder functions as an optical viewfinder, previewing the scene as it is without being affected by exposure, picture mode, or white balance adjustments. Built around the same 16 megapixel sensor as its predecessor, the EM10 Mark II's image quality is excellent. Given the camera's extensive feature set, if there is an aspect of the photo you don't like, there's probably an adjustment that'll make it right, from manual exposure to keeping warm light warm when shooting auto white balance. And the camera renders colors accurately and with pleasing amounts of saturation. Rich, but for the most part, not overly vivid. Although reds are often difficult to reproduce, the EM10 II did a great job with the swatch of Chiffon. With a very respectable ISO range of 200 to 25600, the OMD EM10 II provides plenty of flexibility in low light. But thanks to the camera's 5-axis image stabilization, you'll be able to shoot with a lower ISO and still get sharp photos. Despite the lack of 4K video, there is a 4K time-lapse feature, however. It gets a slight boost in video options over the previous model, including 60p and full HD. Manual exposure capabilities will appear more to serious videographers with access to very special effects, and filters are a bonus for those who like to add a creative touch. There's no external microphone jack. If you want an excellent all-around camera that delivers on everything from features to image quality, the Olympus OM-D EM10 II is a great option. Next up, we have the Panasonic Lumix DMC G7, which is our choice for the best for beginners. The DMC G7 is a premium camera wrapped in a plastic body and bundled with a starter zoom lens. If you can get past the plasticky feel, you'll find that the 16 megapixel micro four thirds sensor does a fine job capturing images, and an even better one when it comes to 4K video. Despite dropping the mirror box, the G7 takes its design cues from SLRs. Its body is slim with sharp angles, but the hand grip is deep and the EVF occupies the same space as the optical viewfinder would in an SLR. It measures 3.4 by 4.9 by 3 inches and weighs 14.6 ounces without a lens. There are loads of controls in the G7's body. That can be daunting to casual snap shooters, but a plus for photographers who want to take control. The G7 has built-in Wi-Fi, and it's easy enough to connect the camera with your phone. Android users do it via NFC, and iPhone users just need to connect the camera via the Wi-Fi network that it broadcasts. The G7 starts, focuses, and fires in about 0.8 seconds, which is a fine result for a mirrorless camera. The G7 is quick to focus, looking on in about 0.05 seconds in bright light, but it can slow in dimmer conditions. With a lens with a narrow aperture, like the kit lens, it can slow to as much as a second, but using a wide aperture, prime, can speed dim light focus to 0.3 seconds. The G7 is the first interchangeable lens camera to truly deliver upon the promise of 4K video capture in this price range. It doesn't have quite the same level of pro recording options as Panasonic's premium GH4, but it is capable of recording 100 megabytes per second of 4K footage at 30 FPS or 24 FPS, as well as 1080p 60 FPS video at 28 megabytes per second, and 1080p 30 FPS at 20 megabytes per second, all in MP4 format. Thankfully, there is a standard mic input, so you can connect a shotgun mic for better quality in the field, or a wireless lavalier for interviews. The G7 also includes an external battery charger and supports SD, SDHC, 
and SD-XC memory. The Panasonic Lumic DMC G7 is one of the better mirrorless cameras you can buy. Even though it lacks the stellar build quality, its image quality is just a step behind the APS-C models at high SOs, and the Micro Four Thirds lens system is extensive and well worth the sub $750 price tag. Next up, we have the Sony Alpha A6300, or the best value for your money. Its layout and style are similar to that of the A6000, but the A6300 is a few millimeters thicker, a little heavier, and is made of stronger stuff in certain areas. The frame is magnesium, both back and front, making the camera feel tough and solid. While bigger, heavier, and somewhat tougher than its predecessors, the Sony Alpha A6300 is designed for ease of use, rather than the supreme manual control. For at $1,000, bucks, i am a little surprised by the accessibility of its control layout. Its 2.4 million dot resolution doesn't set any new standards, but it's big, it's bright, and it can even carry on displaying an image preview between burst shots. The viewer display is pretty decent, but it almost nudges you towards using the EVF, since its default setting is no good for use outdoors. It just isn't bright enough, and unlike your average smartphone, there's no auto brightness setting. Instead, you have to flick through the menus to find the sunny mode. It also can't be used in selfie mode, which is rather annoying for some situations. The Sony Alpha A6300 is a modern camera, one that doesn't shy away from newer functionality, unlike some DSLRs. It has NFC, for example, which makes sending images over to a phone a little quicker. As usual, photos are transmitted using Wi-Fi. The A6300 is part of a growing army of cameras charged over micro USB by default. Sony makes a classic battery charger, but one isn't supplied in the box as standard. At full resolution, the camera reaches 11 FPS, with a buffer that lets you shoot at that speed for 45 frames worth of fine quality JPEGs. The Sony Alpha A6300 standard ISO range is 100 to 25600, but can be extended to 32,000, 41,500, and 51,200 if needed. The sensor resolution is 24.2 megapixels, just like the Nikon D5500. The level of fine detail captured will depend on how sharp a lens you use, but the sensor captures plenty of information, and the A6300 is very adept at holding onto details in its higher ISO raw files. As good as the Sony Alpha A6300 is for stills, it has more impressive features on the video side. The big one is 4K video capture, using XAVCS codec. It will shoot at 25 frames per second at 4K. Overall, it's a great compact system camera that offers excellent image quality, as well as decent performance as an action camera too. Next, we have the Fuji X-T2, our runner-up for the best overall mirrorless camera and it's nearly $1,000 cheaper than our top pick. The X-T2 builds on its predecessor with 4K video recording, faster performance, dual card slots, and a new 24 megapixel sensor with 169 phase detect autofocus points built in. All the evidence so far suggests that this is the best Fujifilm camera to date. The electronic viewfinder is the same as on the X-T1, and few other cameras can match the enormous 0.77 times magnification. With a 2.4 million dot resolution, very short blackout time to recapture, and the ability to show the full gamut of camera settings and menus, I'd argue that this is at least as good as using an optical viewfinder on a professional DSLR. The magnesium body is weather sealed to protect it from the elements, which is pretty nice. There are twin SD-XC slots behind a door on the side of the camera, each supporting cards up to 256 gigabytes in capacity. On the other side, there are USB 3, and a micro HDMI sockets, a 3.5 millimeter microphone input, and a 2.5 millimeter wired remote socket. It includes an additional shutter release button and various other controls for improved ergonomics when shooting in portrait orientation. It adds another 369 grams to the weight of the camera and some extra chunkiness to the existing grip. Some 4K cameras get around this by using a 4K crop on the sensor, so each pixel in the 4K video frame is taken from a single pixel on the sensor. The Fujifilm X-T2 uses a cropped 5120 by 2880 area of the sensor for 4K capture, but that's still bigger than the 3840 by 2160 resolution of its 4K video. 4K videos are recorded as QuickTime files with AVC compression at 120 megabytes per second and a choice of 23.98 FPS, 24 FPS, 25 FPS, and 29.97 FPS frame rates. Full HD 1080p videos are at 42 megabytes a sec and add 50 FPS and 59.95 FPS to the frame rates. Overall, the Fujifilm X-T2 is an excellent camera for video, particularly for advanced users who would most likely choose to focus manually regardless of the autofocus features. For photographers, this is also an equally strong pick and for those in the $1,500 price range, this is a really solid option. Last, and our choice for the best overall mirrorless camera is the Sony A7R II. In the newly reignited war of resolution and pro cameras, Sony A7R II slips in at 42 megapixels, right between the camera 5DSR's 50 megapixels 
and the Nikon's D810's 36 megapixels. But the camera doesn't really need to claim the highest resolution to stand out in the crowd of full frame cameras. It's excellent photo quality, great video, including support for 4K, and compact, comfortable designs speak for themselves. This camera incorporates a full frame BSI, which means backside illuminated CMOS sensor, Sony's Exmor R branded sensors. BSI sensors have become extremely popular because their construction makes them more sensitive in low light than traditional CMOS imagers, and because their structure allows for faster readout speeds needed to support high frame rate video and stills. BSI technology allows Sony to cram the 42.4 megapixels on the sensor and attain ISO sensitivity of up to ISO 100 to 400, even in video, while enabling a lot of other new features in the camera. The A7R2 fits solidly in the middle of the full frame pack, and its performance is pretty consistent, whether you're using a middling lens like the 28 to 70 mm or a good prime like the 55 1.8. It takes about 1.5 seconds to power on, focus, and shoot. Keep in mind, slow startup is one of the general weaknesses of interchangeable lens models compared to DSLRs. Autofocus is much improved over previous models, running about 0.3 seconds in both good and dim light. It can sustain a burst at roughly 4.9 FPS with autofocus and auto exposure in either RAW or JPEG for 24 shots but for slowing significantly. You can start a new burst immediately, but it takes a while to write the photos to the card. With only a few exceptions, the a7R2 is an exceptionally well-designed camera. The dust and weather sealed magnesium alloy body has a substantial grip and thumb rest that helps to balance heavier lenses, even when shooting single-handed. The video is absolutely terrific on this camera as well. It produces better video quality than most cameras that cost thousands more. Recently, this camera has become a favorite of a lot of famous YouTubers, and for good reason. With better performance, a better design, and an expanded feature set over the original A7R, it really is worth the upgrade if you've got reason to consider it. If you're looking for not only the best mirrorless camera on the market, but one of the best cameras on the market today, period, look no further than the Sony A7R2. Almost no one who has owned this camera that I have heard has been disappointed with its performance, as it produces extremely high quality photos and videos. All right, guys. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it, and if you did, please go ahead and give it a like. And if you're new to the channel and you liked it, consider subscribing. We do all kinds of videos just like this over a number of products, all aimed to providing the best products and making purchasing decisions way easier. Be sure to check out the description for links to find the most up-to-date pricing on all the products mentioned in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope everyone has a great day, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.